Shani Suber, Dean of Instruction and Online Learning at Brookhaven. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create alternative text for images. We'll go over best practices for writing effective text, and then I'll show you the technical steps for adding it to images in some common applications. But first, let's start by defining what alternative text is. When you create content that provides information through visuals, Alternative text is a description that you need to add in order to ensure that people who can't see those visuals can still access the information. This text description of the visual elements usually does not appear on the page for everyone to see. Instead, a screen reader will read it out loud when it encounters an image, graphic, or table on the page. Alternative text is often called alt text for short. Alt tag image description, and alt attribute are also other names for the same accessibility feature. To demonstrate why alt text is important, I want you to imagine this is an email you've just received. The subject line of the email says, free pizza party, and the first line of the email text reads, details below. Based on what you can see here, when and where is this free pizza party? Well, of course, there's no way to know because there's a great big blank where those details should be. And that's the point of this visual. If important information is only represented visually, then people who can't see the image will miss out on the information. For people who use screen readers, an image might as well be this big gray rectangle for all the information it can provide on its own. Images, and images that are just pictures of text are both equally meaningless to a screen reader. Or, more accurately, those images are meaningless until we add alternative text. To show you how to write alt text, let's use that pizza party image as an example. On the left, I have the image that contains the party information as just a picture of text, along with a stylized picture of a pizza. On the right, I've typed out the meaningful information presented by the image. Pizza party on August 26 at 1 p.m. in the Student Center. That text won't be visible on the page, but it will be read aloud by a screen reader when it encounters this image. Now, let's hear what our pizza party email sounds like when it's read aloud by a screen reader, both with and without alt text. Let's listen to how the image below is read out loud by a screen reader when there is no alt text. Graphic unlabeled 4.42 inches wide by 2.56 inches high. Now let's listen to how the image below is read out loud by a screen reader when the image contains alt text. Graphic pizza party on August 26th at 1 p.m. in the student center. 4.35 inches wide by 2.48 inches high. As you could hear in that example, people who are blind or visually impaired will not be able to understand the purpose and content of an image if it doesn't have alt text. That makes adding alt text to images an essential part of creating accessible materials. But alt text can also come in handy for everyone when images don't display the way their creator intends. For example, this could happen when an image is broken on your web page or in your eCampus course or when someone has just chosen to stop images from loading on their browser or device. Here's an example announcement in eCampus that originally used our pizza party image, but something went wrong and the image didn't display as expected. So, instead, the alt text appeared on the page in its place. Thanks to that alt text, everyone who reads this announcement is still going to get the information, even though they can't see the image. Now that you know what alternative text is and why it's so important, let's talk about how to write effective alt text for the visuals in your content. The first thing you should do when writing alt text is consider the context of the visual. For example, here's the same picture of a puppy used in two different contexts. Under the picture on the left, we have text that reads, please adopt me. And on the right, the text under the picture reads, buy our puppy chow. Even though the images are identical, the contexts create a significant difference in the type and amount of detail most people would want to hear. 
If I'm on an animal shelter's website looking for just the right puppy to adopt, I'm interested in lots of details about the physical characteristics and general attitude that the pictures on the website are intended to convey. But if this is just a generic visual on an advertisement, the picture doesn't really provide information that I need to know. With the importance of context in mind, here are a few other tips to help you write effective alt text. First, limit the alt text to relevant information. The purpose of alt text isn't to provide an exhaustive description of every image. Instead, you should use alt text to highlight just what matters in terms of how the image is being used in context and what information the reader needs to be aware of. Second, the alt text should describe any relevant information accurately. That's especially important if the image contains information that the reader needs to act on or remember for later, like instructions, event details, or something that will be on a test. Third, keep your alt text as brief as possible. A short phrase or sentence is usually enough for most images. You can also leave out phrases like image of or picture of at the start of your alt text. The screen reader will already announce that it's an image, so including that information in your alt text is redundant. If the purpose of an image is purely to add decoration, your alt text can just be the word decorative. This last tip is just for images that you create yourself. If possible, don't create an image that includes text as part of the picture. When your text is really just a picture of text, like in the pizza party example we've been using, you'll have to re-enter all that information as alternative text anytime you use the image. If you separate your text and your graphics, you'll save yourself time and make the information easier for everyone to understand. For example, in the pizza party promotion on the right, I can mark the image of a pizza as decorative and let the text communicate my meaning. Okay, so now you're ready to compose effective alt text. Let's look at the technical steps for adding it to your images, starting with Microsoft Office. In this example, we'll be looking specifically at Microsoft Word, but the steps will be similar in PowerPoint as well. To add alternative text to an image in newer versions of Word, right-click the image and choose Edit Alt Text from the menu. That opens the Alt Text pane, and now you can type or paste alternative text into the text box. There is no Save button that you need to click to confirm the changes. While you're in the Alt Text pane, you may notice that there is a button that says Generate a description for me. I would be very careful about using that button, since a computer can't understand the context of your image and so likely won't generate very effective alt text for it. If you have a purely decorative image, however, you can use the Mark as Decorative box in the alt text pane. When you mark an image as decorative, the image is formatted so that a screen reader will just skip over it. Older versions of Word don't have the Mark as Decorative box, and the process of getting to the Alt Text pane has just a few more steps. You start out the same by right-clicking the image, but in older versions of Word, there's no Edit Alt Text option listed in the menu. Instead, choose Format Picture or Format Shape. The options will vary depending on what type of visual you've right-clicked. A Settings pane will open on the right side of the screen. In that Settings pane, choose the Layout and Properties icon. Next, click Alt Text to expand the Alternative Text options. Enter a short title for the image, and then add Alt Text in the Description box. Just like in the newer versions of Word, there is no Save button that you need to click to confirm the changes. If you'd like to skip some of those steps by using the newer version of Microsoft Office, you can easily get the update for free. To update Office on a college-owned computer, just call or email your local IT office. They'll update the software for you. You can also install the latest version of Microsoft Office on your personal computer for free by using the district license. 
Just go to dccd.sharepoint.com forward slash sites forward slash employee tools and select discounts. Then scroll down the page to find the Microsoft Home Use Program instructions. In addition to Microsoft Office files, you can also add alt text to images in your emails in Microsoft Outlook. The process is very similar to what I just showed you. If you're using the desktop version of Outlook on a Windows computer, right-click the image in your email and choose Edit Alt Text from the menu. That opens the alt text pane, and now you can type the alternative text for the image in the text box. On the desktop version of Outlook for Mac, the interface looks slightly different, but the process is exactly the same. Right-click the image in your email and choose Edit Alt Text from the menu. Then add a description for the image in the text box of the Alt Text pane. If you're using the browser-based version of Outlook, right-click the image in your email and choose Add Alternative Text from the menu. Add Alt Text for the image in the text box, then click OK to save the changes. If you sometimes use G Suite apps like Google Docs and Google Slides rather than Microsoft Office, creating alt text in these tools is very similar to the steps we already went through for Office. Here's an example image embedded in a Google Doc. To add alt text, right-click the image and select Alt Text from the menu. In the pop-up alt text window, Enter a title for the image and then enter the alt text in the description field. Click OK to save your changes. The process is the same for adding alt text in Google Slides. Finally, let's take a look at how to create accessible images in eCampus. You can add alt text when you first add an image to eCampus, but you can also edit an existing image to add alt text. Let's start with the first scenario. To add an image to a content item in eCampus, place your cursor in the text box where you would like the image to appear. Then click the Insert Edit Image icon in the text editing toolbar. A settings window will open. Browse for the image either on your computer or in your eCampus content collection. After you choose an image, a preview of that image will load. Add your alt text to the image description text box and add a title for the image in the title text box. Then click Insert. The image will be added to your content item. You can also edit an existing image to add alt text to it. While you're editing a content item, Click an image to select it. Then click the Insert Edit Image icon in the text editing toolbar. The settings window for the image will open. Add your alt text to the image description text box and add a title for the image in the title text box. Then click Update. The alt text will be added to your image if you have any trouble accessing any of the image editing settings on eCampus, try adding and editing images in a different internet browser. That's all the technical steps we're going to cover. But before we finish, let's go over two other issues you might run into when creating alt text for your materials. First, some of your images might actually be complex infographics which means that a few words or a sentence won't be able to convey all the visual information. However, making this kind of content accessible doesn't mean writing the world's longest alt text essay. Instead, you can provide a plain text version that gives your readers the same information in a more accessible form. Here's an example infographic from the CDC. The graphic only version is at the top, but then, below it, the same information is repeated in plain text form. And, because of that, the alt text for the original image can be really simple. 
It's just the name of the infographic and then the instruction to see details below. This plain text version might also be helpful for a number of people who wouldn't need alt text. Unlike the infographic, the text of this version will be searchable and easy to copy-paste. It will also be cheaper to print. Another scenario in which you don't need detailed alt text is when an image is already described in detail on the visible page text. For example, there's a picture of the Mona Lisa on this web page. But the entire content of that page is dedicated to providing contextually relevant information about the Mona Lisa. So, there's no reason that the authors would repeat all of that information again in the alt text. Instead, the alt text can just be some brief identifying details like the name of the painting and the artist who painted it. In this case, you can see that information in the caption underneath the image. To finish up, let's recap the key takeaways about alt text. First, we need to add meaningful alt text so that people who are blind or visually impaired will be able to understand any information that's being presented visually. But alt text also benefits a much wider audience because it will usually display when an image is broken or when someone has chosen to stop images from loading on their device. When you're writing alt text, the first thing you should think about is the context of the image. Rather than providing a detailed description of every element of the visual, alt text should only describe details that are relevant to how the image is being used and what users need to understand about it. The alt text should also state that information as briefly as possible. While there are some exceptions, a phrase or a sentence is usually enough for most images. To learn more tips for creating accessible materials, visit DCCCD's full accessibility checklist at dcccd.edu forward slash accessibility checklist. The checklist includes alt text, but it also covers nine other best practices that will help make your materials accessible to people with disabilities and more effective for everyone. You can also access the links to resources that I've mentioned by viewing this PowerPoint online. Just use the short link dcccd.edu forward slash a11y-15 to access this presentation, as well as all the others in the 15-minute accessibility video series. Thank you for watching.